morning, good morning, guys. So after the last video, many of you were very interested in getting a tiny house tour. So in the last video, I was talking about how much a tiny house costs. In this video, I'll give you a quick little tiny house tour. We'll go over our plans for what's gonna be happening um, outside of the house. And that will give you a better idea of what's gonna be happening out here, just because a lot of you are very curious about, you know, what we're gonna be doing. Are we gonna have a fence or what are, like, what's gonna be happening? So that's what we're gonna go over in, uh, in today's video. So walking up to the front of the house, um, I do just wanna quickly note the orientation of the house. So the front of the house here is pointing north, so north is directly behind me. That's south, we got east, and then we got west. So the orientation of the house is really important for passive solar um, heating and cooling as well. So our house is oriented in a way that during the summertime, it's gonna get the least amount of passive heat that's gonna be passing through um, the larger portion of the house. And during the winter time, when the sun is much lower in the sky, it's going to be heating the house um, much more passively so that the house stays warmer in the winter months and it stays cooler in the in the summer months. I'll have to go over the specifics about passive heating and cooling in another video um, but just keep in mind that the orientation of the house is certainly important. So just walking up to the front here Hannah and I have our table and our two chairs from our apartment just so that we have something to sit on uh, while we're basically camping out inside of the house. And then we have all the plywood here that is left over from basically the construction of the tiny house and this is kind of acting as our makeshift deck for right now. And I did finally actually build a step for the front door, so so now it is way easier to get inside of the house just by going on the step. Plus the dogs are having troubles jumping up there, so the step is good. Uh, many people seemed very concerned that the house was gonna like sink down. Like the house is not sitting on uh, the wheels at all. Like the house is actually jacked up, the wheels aren't even touching the ground. So the house here is supported at four different places at each of the corners. There's two up at the front there. These are just standard uh, three-ton jack stands that the house is sitting on. I've spray painted them black, including the uh, the concrete blocks that they're sitting on. So the house is, um, it's not gonna be sinking on these blocks. Maybe it will, like a very small amount. But with the wide footprint of these blocks, it's not gonna, it's really not gonna shift too much. So this is one of the jack stands at the front of the house here. Um, you can't see it down below here, but this is sitting on one of those same concrete blocks that are at the other end there. And again, I just spray painted these black uh, just to match the color of the trailer. So there's nothing too crazy going on up front here. Uh, we did buy a generator so that we do have some electricity so we can cook some food, we can have the lights on and stuff uh, when we're just uh, camping out here. And what's nice about having a generator like that is that when we have our solar set up, if for whatever reason we're using a ton of electricity and uh, we need to recharge the batteries quicker, we'll be able to plug in the generator into our inverter slash charge controller um, so that we can charge the batteries using not only obviously the solar panels, but the generator if we're, uh, if we're in a pickle. Some of the extra materials and obviously our ladders, I'm just kind of storing out under this tree right now. Um, just because we don't really have a better place to put it. And I guess something that I should mention that's going to be going on right here. So we have the house here and then right in this area right here, there's going to be an 8x12 shed which is gonna have like the washing machine in it. It's gonna have the batteries. It's gonna have the pressure tank. It's gonna have the water pump. And then um, it's also gonna be storage for a lot of our tools and all that kind of stuff. So that's gonna be going on right here. And then right up here is, uh, is basically where the water tanks are gonna be going. So everything is gonna be flowing downhill uh, towards the house. Hannah started building a compost bin uh, right over there using cinder blocks. So she's been doing a really good job with that. Coming back out to the front of the house, we are gonna have an awning. It's going to start right here, just below the level of the three upper windows. So it's gonna be between this window and that window. And the awning is gonna come out about 12 feet or so. So it's gonna come out pretty well, almost all the way out, I don't know, probably out to here. So this is gonna be our outdoor living space. We're not gonna build a wooden deck out here. Um, I am gonna grade this land off, so make it a little bit more level. And then we're just going to basically brick the area underneath the awning 
so that we have this um, so that we'll have some really nice outdoor living space here we'll have to get like a like a different table for being outside and stuff so that we can uh, so that we can have family and friends over and uh, we can have a good time outside of the house because the inside is obviously pretty small and so there's just so much more space outside here all right and then coming into the house here this will be new for a lot of people to see so we got these two nice kind of like burnt yellow chairs uh, from Ikea and then we got these really nice bar stools which uh, I think they go really well just with the overall colors and the decor of the house um, so a lot of you haven't seen this so this is kind of like the updated version of what's going on on the inside here and this cabinet here uh, right now it's uh, storing the drone and then down below we're gonna have the amplifier here so we got all the speaker wire here so we're gonna have some speakers on a shelf um, that's gonna go on this wall here and then we uh, and then we have two speaker wires outside so we can have music playing inside or outside or both um, which is gonna be really nice for having people over and entertaining so a lot of people are very worried about the drywall cracking so there aren't any cracks in the drywall from moving the tiny house to Tucson to here, which I think is probably about 40 or 50 miles. So it's really good that the drywall, it didn't crack in any places. So there is uh, so there's nothing for us to really fix on the inside here. So the kitchen area here uh, pretty well looks exactly the same. Um, you will notice that there is the addition of the, uh, of the faucet here. So I did install that recently. And then something else that I installed here, um, you can see that I installed uh, the drain pipe. So we just have a regular S-trap here. And then the drain pipe is just going out uh, straight to the bottom of the house. So this is inch and a half um, of the black, I believe it's ABS or whatever it is. We've tested this out with some water and it's, uh, it's all good to go. And I still have to hook up the faucet uh, to the water lines here. Um, you will also notice that when I was drilling the hole here, uh, the first hole that I did uh, was not in a good position because it basically went into one of the runner beams in the trailer. So I had to kind of shift the position over here. And then the hole down here that goes through the subfloor, I've already filled it up with insulation. Um, so it's already nice and sealed up. So you can see the sink drain right here coming out the bottom of the house. So this is going to basically be piped down into the ground. And then the pipe is going to, uh, it's going to go to a tree. So we're probably going to plant um, some type of shade tree or a fruit tree that's going to be going right here. So all the gray water from the sink is going to be put to good use. It's going to be watering a tree here that's going to be providing both shade and food. So that's going to be really cool. So coming back into the house, we stayed out here, I would say at least uh, four or five nights so far. And it's actually been really, really comfortable up here. Uh, this is just a mattress topper and uh it, it does the job like it's totally uh it's totally comfortable and it's been uh it's really cozy to sleep up there it's really really nice hannah and i have both uh really enjoyed it so far so you can see that the other loft here is just full of uh tools and some materials and some of the finishing products um so eventually that will be an office kind of area kind of like an office lounge area and um it'll be a nice comfortable place to work and that's what it's gonna be, but right now, it's, uh, it's basically just storage. A few people have asked about the air conditioner. So that's gonna be, the blower unit is gonna be up here. Um, I haven't installed it yet. The, the blower unit is up there. And then the other part of the mini split unit, um, it was sitting underneath the tree out there. So that's where the blower unit's gonna go for the, uh, for the AC. So we're definitely not gonna be going throughout the summer uh, without any air conditioning. It's not something that needs to be installed right now because we're coming up to winter time, but it is something I'm gonna be installing in the next few months and it'll just go right up here. Coming into the bathroom here, we have the very controversial uh, compost and toilet. We haven't even used it yet, um, but we do have to get some sawdust and stuff so that we can, uh, so that we have some cover material. Something that I finished a few days ago was I did all the grout in the shower, um, so the grout's ready to be sealed, and um, the shower came out really nice. Obviously, we still have to put the uh, the fittings on and the uh, and the shower head, um, but it came out it came out really nice. I still have to clean off. Uh, the face of the tiles because I, because it still has that little layer of, uh, of kind of grit residue on it and we'll get that all cleaned up. I'll probably do some caulking in the corners and uh, then this is going to be finished real soon. And so this is the sliding door for the bathroom. So it turned out really nice. Hello. 
What's nice about this door is not only does it have a mirror on the outside here, is that it also has one on the inside. You got a mirror on the inside here as well. How awesome is that? One last little thing outside that I just want to quickly show you. This is uh, basically what we're using for water while we're out here. Um, just because we don't have a water hookup. So just for some drinking water uh, for us and for the dogs as well. We've just been refilling this five gallon jug of water at Safeway. Um, and we just get, uh, we got some nice clean drinkable water out here uh, that we can use for cooking, for washing our hands and for drinking obviously. Something else that we'll be doing in this area right here is that there will be, um, we'll probably have a, at least a four or five foot fence um, going around basically where our house is and around the water tanks and the shed and um, basically in this general area here a lot of people commented that we're in a wash and we're not in a wash um, we're actually on one of the mesas between the washes up here and there is one little tiny wash that does kind of come in um, back over by this tree over here there's one little wash that comes in right there just a tiny one so over the next year before we get the next set of monsoon rains, which will be uh, July or August of next year, that whole area will be, uh, I'll have lots of permaculture earthworks, so maybe some, some small swales or some berms and some basins in order to control any water that would be coming down that little uh, wash right there. But the major washes, like I'm talking the ones that are like, you know, 10, 15 feet wide, those are nowhere near our house. It was very clear that this is like a mesa area. You want to think of it almost as if this is like a little island. So the washes are like down that way over there and over that way there. Like those are the major washes where there's some pretty decent cuts in the, uh, in the soil. So you can tell that a lot of water definitely flows down here. And I highly doubt that we'll get a lot um, flowing down that little wash right there. But yeah, this whole area will be fenced in. And then along the bottom of the fence, uh, we're basically going to get it's kind of like a, like a steel mesh that's very, very fine and it would be very difficult for any type of snake to get through it. So that'll be lining the bottom of the fence to keep this area obviously um, free from snakes and some of the predators, I'm sure some of them you know, might be able to jump over the fence um, but the dogs are not going to be left unattended outside of the tiny house. So anytime that they're going to be you know, out in the yard or whatever, either Hannah or myself will be out here um, so there shouldn't be any issues with uh, the coyotes, but definitely being out here in the wild, it's something that you, uh, you want to take into account, is that there are uh, a lot of animals that might want to uh, eat your dogs. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much to everyone who's been following uh, this little journey that we're having on Life Inside a Box. Uh, it's my hope that a lot of people really get inspired by it and see what we're doing and you know maybe they can do something similar or it just inspires them to uh, just do more with their life, maybe more do-it-yourself projects or maybe just take a leap in their life and do something kind of crazy like this. I will catch you guys on the next video. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and uh, I'll do my best to answer them in the upcoming videos. Talk to you guys soon. Peace.